thisyblitz.com. Goodness gracious me, <laughs> what haven't I been up to? Um, so I recently took on LA um, with, I have a celebrity mentor now in Hollywood and he's been showing me the ropes. So I started performing in LA, straddling an 11 foot high giant unicorn which lights up and blows bubbles out of its mouth, um, which has been absolutely incredible and I've had a lot of support out there. And the biggest thing that happened really this year was I finally gained a residency in Singapore. So after burlesque was seen as a publicly indecent activity, we've gone to now me being the resident artist at a venue in Singapore. So that is a phenomenal thing, not just for myself personally, but an achievement, I believe, for the art scene in Asia as a whole um, to celebrate something that is so different and so female sexually empowering. Yeah. Uh, Fantastic how yes. you've you know, gone through that whole Thank transition. you. Thank you so much. Um, and as a global investor for the Sharon Project, yes. what does that mean to you? That's Gosh, that's such an emotional thing. It means so much to me. Because at the end of the day, it might not be going up against forced marriage. But when I started in Burlesque, I was pushing what my family wanted me to do. I was going against them actively and choosing to do something that, of course, was not the norm and that was controversial and, and was sensual, even though it wasn't sexual. And to see other women be disowned for something that is lesser than that is, you know, and to see women being disowned because they have chosen to go up against forced marriage or they've chosen to make decisions in their lives that they wanted to is such a painful painful thing for me to see because it's so, something that I can relate to so profoundly so being the global ambassador for the Sharon project is not just incredibly personal for me to see the the phenomenal work they then go on to do and for me to be a part of that I feel is a huge huge sense of achievement more so than the glitz and glamour of getting up on stage fantastic and in uh, 2017, you were dubbed as the next best thing um, when you welcomed in Hollywood. Ah. Um, tell us about the recognition you gained there. Oh gosh, <laughs> wow, okay, well thank you. Um, yes, it's really been phenomenal. I've been so lucky that I've been um, thrown right into the center of some of the most talented people in Hollywood. And of course, my mentor that I've spoken about, um, David Foster, he's supported me phenomenally and really helped me creatively um, and to be part of that network um, that I think it would have taken some people ages to achieve but I feel like I really do feel grateful that my talents were kind of seen in Asia and then I was thrown right into the melting pot of some of the greatest minds to be able to draw from them and take that into my acts and make my routines bigger and better and really express myself on such a high platform at such a you know high point with so many incredible people it's just been as you can probably tell I'm struggling to vocalize it it is just phenomenal phenomenal unbelievable what makes you such a sexy Asian and a dissy icon oh my goodness um, I don't consider myself sexy um, I am actually incredibly uncool um, but somehow I wing it um, I, so, somehow I feel like I may pull it off I think it's all about confidence I didn't start as a confident Asian Asian woman, I kind of burlesque actually taught me how to be confident. I wasn't confident, so I did burlesque. I actually did IT. But I think burlesque really helped me gain my confidence, explore my sexuality, be comfortable with my body and how to work those angles. And I guess over the years I've kind of like felt more comfortable and felt like I could push the boundaries more and celebrate my own sexuality more as a as a woman. Um, so yeah, but oh gosh, it's crazy when people say Say, you know she's like a she's sexy or she's an icon because I still feel like no matter what kind of like sexy outfit I'm in inside my head I'm still like that weird socially awkward IT geek truly deep down um, that is the reality of the situation that spoons their cats to sleep every single night 
too. <laughs> and how do you manage to look so good? What's the sticky secret? Wow. Um, I'm going to take all these compliments. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, drink lots of water. Um, no, I have an amazing team of people who help me um, get ready for events and uh, allow me to come up with these crazy ideas and support them. Like today, I'm rocking hair made out of sequins and everyone thought I was mad, but um, they somehow support me. Um, incredible people like my hair people, Siobhan, and I have my uh, costume designer, Kiku Boutique, Lynn, and incredible makeup people that help me put the whole look together. And I think without them, I would definitely not look this put together because I legitimately get about three hours sleep every night. Wow. I'm in a different country every week. So natural base me, I don't think is nearly half as glamorous. <laughs> um, and tell us three Desi things that you love and adore. Three Desi things that I love and adore. Yes. I always wear a putu, which is, you guys probably call it a bindi, yeah. um, because I feel like I should absolutely reclaim that. It doesn't make you super traditional and cool. Putus are cool, bindis are cool, and so just because uh, you take on Hollywood doesn't mean you should ever stop wearing one. So that's number one. Number two, um, I just feel like I'm part of the melanin movement, and I think Asian visibility is happening more and more in the entertainment industry. Um, an incredible guy called Henry Golding who just came out with a film called Crazy Rich Asians, which has an all Asian cast, and I'm proud to be an Asian. And I think young people growing up now are like, yeah, I want to be like Suki or Henry, and they don't just say, I want to be like Brad or Angelina, and therefore that is like a huge powerful thing. So I'm like the melanin movement. And number three, is somebody going to kill me if I say Shah Rukh Khan? <laughs> You know, I don't you know. care. How, no, not today, not but tonight. Years ago. I don't care how old that guy gets. He's like a fine wine, and I don't even drink. <laughs> um, so I think he's he's uh, his contribution to my life. Growing up watching Kuch Kuch Hota Hai uh, is uh, substantially profound, and I'm not afraid to admit it. <laughs> Fantastic, loving the this in you. Um, and um, do you have a message you'd like to say to your Disney Bits fans? Um, thank you for supporting me throughout the years I really really does you know I hope that I continue to make you proud um, that I continue to um, be a role model for you guys I'm just so um, so humbled that both Desi Blitz as a magazine and a site and you guys that follow me still follow me and support me and every single one of your Instagram comments and likes I watch and I I see you guys as much as you see me and I really believe like I'm part of this family and I support you as much as you support me so thank you